Do you want to make games with Godot 3.1 for a game jam? Or just, you know, because you want you like Godot, you want to make games? Well, you should check out our plugin, the Rukuko plugin. It's a story management plugin for Godot 3.1. I'm, I'm doing a different intro. There's your value proposition. So if you want to watch this video, that's what I'll be talking about. I think that's how I'm going to do all these official vlogs. Yes, that's right. Once again, it's Zon the Daddy Dev. I also go by the moniker title pending on the internet. And welcome to the second vlog for Rukuko. If you're not familiar with what Rukuko is, that's why I have the new intro. And you can also click on a video uh, here, I guess here. If you want to know more about the project, I'll put links to the first video and the series uh, down below. Uh, those of you who are seeing the first video, welcome. Uh, these are the current templates here that we'll be working on for Rukuko. And I will be talking about the ga phone game simulator as as the, my fingers are disappearing. The phone game simulator as as the first template we're working on and what, how that is going as far as game design and game art. So I'll be talking about using Inkscape and how that relates to the overall game design for the first template. I'm very excited. Uh, we have gotten some people really interested in the Walker shooter. We'll be working on that. Uh, I don't know if I'll be talking about the 3D space game anytime soon, but these are the next set of templates. I'm very excited. And I know this is a little early, but if you have a template you would like for us to work as part of the Rukuko story management plugin for Godot 3.1, please put your suggestions in the comments or wherever you see this video, so forth and so on. The second part of this video, I will be talking about the back end, as now we have Rukuko is a front end project, and then I'll be talking about the back end project related to William Nations and how uh, Will Nations uh, has joined or has uh, joined this project officially and how that benefits us uh, greatly. So that is just uh, an amazing, amazing update in itself. If you, again, want to skip uh, the stuff I know about, game design and game art, and you want to jump to the programming side, you can find a timestamp below. Click that, and it will show you some really cool stuff that's going on the back end of this project with Will Nations, uh, his, his YouTube, his Discord. It's just been all around good. It's just been, it's been a, it's been a good, a good two weeks in this project, I guess. Now I, I will just throw this out there. I'm doing taxes right now, so taxes have been mentally draining me because it's sandwiched between being a dad and work and it's just I'm getting I feel sick right now just thinking about the taxes I have to do so let's not think about taxes right now let's get into game design game development the fun stuff the dream job the thing that we all want to do now before I get started I'm just going to do this and I'm going to talk to you about storyboarding and what I was using storyboarding for if you're not familiar with storyboarding storyboarding is a way uh, in television shows movies or animation animated shows that they sketch they draw out like what is going to happen in a sequence that will basically guide uh, guide the viewer through a scene and in this case instead of a scene it's a game and the second screen or the second GU, GUI, GUI, the second GUI, user interface, the second UI, user interface, that the player is going to see is the load their game screen. I don't know how to say that better. So the load their game screen is where they will click which games they'd like to load uh, into, uh, into the simulation, into the text phone simulator. Finally, the second thing that they will see is a in-game screen that will mimic a phone and on that will be a time to which the player is starting the game in the, not the real time, but the fake, the in-game time and a date. Because interestingly enough, uh, a lot of these games that I've seen that are really good are set within like, you know, a day, seven days, a certain time period where they have to do things in order to see an ending. Uh, and whether they succeed at certain things means they get a good ending. Whether they fail at certain things in a certain time is a bad ending, so forth and so on. So there we go. This is the storyboard of where the player goes. After they click that button, they click the start button, what will happen is they will be taken to an operating system. And this is Inkscape, by the way. Inkscape is open source. And a lot of these, uh, I did make a lot of these art, a lot of the art, but uh, the first three top, the icons are actually from Open Clip Source. Dot org or open clip source. I'll put a link. There'll be a link below. And the uh, background picture is actually from Unsplash. So all these things are in public domain or free to use, so forth and so on. And I might put these templates also 
on opengame.org, uh, or I might also put these out so that they anyone can use. Uh, I'm not sure. If you want me to put my assets for free, put a comment below. All right, anyway, the thing is, is that, uh, so looking at this, the uh, player is taken to the screen and they have four options from this template that I am designing. The first one is the car. Uh, now what that car template, car template, car app is gonna be, that fake app, is basically going to be, this is gonna be interesting, but thinking about this game, this could be the easiest open world game you could make. And hear me out, as that probably would be my clickbait, if I do clickbait this title at all. Uh, the easiest game, open world game to make why is that possible? It's a text-based game. Yeah, it's got pictures, but ideally, when you click on that, the player will get the choice to travel. How will they travel? Will they walk to the cafe? Will they take a car, like a rideshare to the cafe, where they might meet someone on the rideshare? Will they take a taxi? Will they take a subway? Will they take a bus? These decisions, will they run? These decisions will affect options related to the simulation, right? So if the player chooses to walk, something good could happen on the way, or they could be robbed, who knows? Uh, the scale of the world then is just literally based on the amount of, of text or how much writing a developer wants to do. So again, a text-based game ideally is the easiest open world type of game. I guess that's fair to say, I don't know. You can tell me if I'm full of it, uh, but that's what I'm thinking right now. Uh, moving away from the travel uh, part comes the uh, settings part. And ironically, the settings tab is a literal settings tab. It is a tab where you click on that and you can change the in-game settings. Yeah, I don't know if we'll get into brightness, but definitely volume control, that type of stuff. And interestingly enough, as we have the top bar, the very top, the battery and the uh, you know internet speed, those two things are actually in meta games in the game. So you have to manage your battery because like player life, certain apps, if you keep them open for too long, will drain the battery. Certain decisions you make in the scenario, in the simulation will also drain your battery. Same thing with travel. If you choose to uh, walk or take a subway, maybe that subway goes under a tunnel. If it goes under the tunnel, your bars drop. You can't get, you can't get a text message that will be related to uh, the game and related to certain options and decisions. Uh, the other thing then we have here is a store slash bank. And this works in the sense that this is where you can manage your money. I don't know how many types of managed money things we could have. We could have maybe uh, stock options, uh, ways to have interest on certain things. I don't know. But, and the, uh, the idea is that it's there. Uh, it's gonna be great to buy certain items, so forth and so on. These could be where you could buy quest items uh, story items, yada, yada, yada. Now over here then is that like, one thing to note is that the store I'm thinking, unless we have a way to create an auto generated system for wow. junk, if you wanna buy junk, <laughs> uh, the situation here is that the things that you buy related to the story, it'll be very, it would be a very limited or minimalistic store, you know, a store with lots of quote unquote invisible walls. You can't buy everything you'd see on there. Only items related specifically to the story or maybe certain things unlock like an RPG based on how far or what level you are in the story, okay? Finally, uh, we do have the actual talk app simulator, the social app simulator, which will be the Rukuko. That's where the Rukuko guy is. You click on that, uh, I'll show you where that goes. And fi oh, I guess finally, finally, with the big blue thing right here, this is for developers. Uh, again, this took me a while to make this nice little square. So if you're a developer and you want a nice little square, you can just use this and put whatever icon you want. If you want a special icon. <sighs> so coming back to the Rukuko icon, when you click that, the player will be transferred to the text app. And ideally this is too low. These things actually should be a lot higher. You know what? No, I'll just, yeah, I guess I'll move them right now. Uh, can I just grab these? Oh, I don't. Yes, I'm gonna move these up right now. Just move them up. Okay. Ideally, the, the texting will be here. And what I have here is, yeah, that's a pretty good spot. Uh, what I have here, eh, a little bit more. And, uh, that works for me. Okay. Ideally, what you have here is uh, this area is where you'll have the options for a conversation or choices. And you can click these and that will actually change and adjust to what the uh, player will see. Now, another thing to note is I realize now for alerts, I want to get this in there as a note for myself. Hopefully I don't forget it. Uh, is this like when you click on the button, 
or when when certain actions happen that need to be narrated, they'll actually come up as like alerts. So alerts will be a way for the narr narration of the game to happen. Uh, the other thing is, is that you see these little buttons right here that you click. This is legacy. Again, I'm designing this template in the mindset of a mouse. It, uh, you know, controller basically, you know, that's how the uh, user will input commands is via a mouse. So we need these click things here. Uh, now the thing about this is, coming back to it, is that modern, uh, modern chat apps, you just slide your finger up and down. Well, that's not the case here. This is, this is a case where you have legacy stuff. Oh, and finally, again, these little bars in the top and the bottom will work as overlays. So again, uh, these will be in Godot. And on the top, there's no time. Uh, there's going to be text that will be added in Godot, added in Engine. So that just makes that easier to manipulate as far as variables. And this button right here will be the back button. Once you click it, it takes you back. Woo! Okay. Uh, I, I don't... <laughs> let's talk about programming. I, it's not going to... We're more than half past the video. Uh, I do want to talk about programming really quickly. If you're not familiar with Will Nations, Will Nations is epic. Uh, he helps prolific. He helps a lot of people on the Facebook group. He helps a lot of people with Godot in general. And he has had this thing that he said I should link, which basically is all his help related to Godot. I will say that this is not for the novice. There is a lot of uh, stuff here. There's a lot of good, good opinions. But if you're not familiar with programming, this is a a great way to jump in the deep end of the pool. I, I love that he helps, but again, often the help that he, he gives uh, for me personally is him giving me advice on Facebook and then me having to Google lots of that advice. And what's great is I learn more about programming, I learn more about uh, coding, but whew, it is not it is not novice friendly. Uh, however, if you are a programmer and you're really into this stuff, this is a great resource to check out, but even better than that, uh, we talk about the back end and projects and stuff is the discord is 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 really just is doing great there's been a lot of good stuff in 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 the extended libraries discord so to back up or to reiterate this what will nations is doing is he's developing some really good projects that help us out in con in con uh, in conjunction with what we're what we're planning to do he's got godot next godot journey and all these these uh these libraries these extended libraries will basically have custom codes uh custom tags custom script i don't know if custom scripts a good word but basically things that we need in order to program uh, the types of games we want to make faster and easier and what is going on on his Discord is great because it's really talking about like where they're going with um, programming, so forth and so on. And the great thing about this is you can actually request uh, certain features, options, so forth and so on. So it's really cool what Will is doing. Uh, another thing to note is uh, his YouTube. I'm going to put a link to the... Oh, no. Where is it? Is it here? Oh, son of a gun. Sorry. Uh, I will put a link to his YouTube. His YouTube has gotten a lot better. And he's really put an open invitation where he does want to hear back from more people on far as what he needs to add into Godot Next and Godot Journey or any of the other projects. He's been looking for project suggestions. Uh, it's a really good place on, on the back end of what makes Godot run and tick. And I would recommend, even if you're a novice, that even this Discord is something nice to look at, it's something good to actually check out. I'll be putting a link to it as well. Uh, as far as as Rakuko is going on, uh, we are going to be, or Jebediah's plug, Jebediah's club, Jebediah's club. Oh, not yet. Okay, this will be covering more of the front end stuff that we're doing. So I will be talking a lot about the templates I'm working on, where we're at with Rakuko as far as being usable, uh, so forth and so on. That's it wow we got through that under 16 minutes i think this is an excellent number two uh the vlog uh i'm gonna get something to eat i hope you whoever's watched this has gotten to the end thank you so much for watching this i hope i'm giving you some really good resources related to godot uh 3.1 that you'd be interested in using and as always put some comments or feedback below related to anything uh that i've said mentioned so forth and so on i do have one more thing maybe i'll kind of quickly get into it uh, this idea of like how you actually post issues, and I, you know, I I'm gonna I'm just gonna say this. Uh, this is off the top of my head. Number one, I think it's just really hard. The process of this whole thing. Again, I asked like where do you actually post like uh, an issue? There was an issue in another community related to animation, the bug in animation. Uh, 
it's here. Uh, I might do another devlog on this, but I actually might do it on my other devlog where it's not official uh, related to Rikuko. That might just be a devlog to finish. The other thing I'll do where I just kind of go through my thoughts and processes on things. So that's that. That's coming up. I might still do the tax video. Who knows? Want to keep it under 16 minutes or 17 minutes? Bye, y'all, and great. Uh, please leave a like, comment below, questions. You know what to do. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.